Hello, and welcome back to my Getting Started with C course. In this episode, we'll be going over the basics of C, as well as how to get our first program running on our machine. C is a fairly ubiquitous language, which is used in basically every device on the planet and has been used to build basically every other programming language. Learning it is a very powerful tool to have, and even though you might not use it in day-to-day -day usage, it will teach you a lot about how the computer works. And, moreover, it's quite an elegant and simple language to learn the basics of, so it's a good one to get fundamentals of computer science. To start off with, we need a source code file. This is essentially a plain text file where we store our C code. Once we have completed that, we are able to pass our source code through something called a compiler, which will convert this source code into an executable program that we can actually run on our machine. This process works by reading our text and converting it into the ones and zeros that a computer can understand. In the last episode, we set up our code editor and compiler, which is what we need to be able to edit our source files and compile our code. If you do not have a currently working code editor and C compiler, you might want to go back and watch that episode to get one set up. If you already have these set up, then you can proceed. So, the real question is, where does this all begin? And the answer is the main method. Or more specifically, as you'll see it in a C program, it'll look something a bit more like this. Now this is essentially the simplest C program we can write. This here is called the main method, or sometimes erroneously referred to as the main function, and it is the starting point of all of our C programs. When we compile our C program, the compiler will look for this main function, as it appears here, and it will know that that is the starting point for all of our code. Generally, the main function will look something like this. It actually takes in some information from the command line process. However, we don't need to learn about that right now. Once we've defined our main function, all of the code that we are running can go inside the function scope. Now, of course, this is all a bit abstract, so let's jump over to our actual code editor and get started writing some code to see how this all works. Okay, so now we're over in our editor. In this case, I'm using VS Code, which I highly recommend for everyone watching to use VS Code. It's a really good editor and um, makes things a lot easier. So you're gonna have this basic interface or something similar to it. And the first thing we're gonna to want to do is open a project folder for all of our C files. So uh, if you see this blue button here that says open folder, it might be hiding behind this Explorer side panel. You can click that. Alternatively, if you don't see that, you can go file, open folder. And when we do that, you're going to want to navigate to somewhere to store your C programs. I recommend just creating a new folder called programming with C or something and placing it somewhere where you won't lose it. Once you open this, in this case, you'll see that I have a whole bunch of programs in here. And that's because I was playing around in testing. However, when you open your new folder, you're not going to have anything. So what I'm going to do is simply copy all of my folders and delete them so that we're working with the same information. Okay, so instead you'll be looking at something like this, just an empty folder with nothing going on. And what we need to do is to create that first source file that we talked about. So pressing the plus button, you're going to create a folder, or not under this, sorry, my bad. You're going to press the plus button, and you're going to create a file called main.c. Now you can call it whatever you want, but for our purposes we're just going to call it main, um, because it's an easy name to remember. And this gets us into our C environment. Now, as you can see on my screen, uh, it's worked out that I'm using the C programming language. And if you look down here on your bottom status bar, uh, the blue or purple status bar, you'll see down here that under select language mode, it's chosen C because it already has worked out from the name of the file being .c that this is a C file. However, if you're first time using VS Code, you might need to install your C extensions. So clicking on these little four squares on the left-hand bar, uh, it's labeled extensions when you hover over it. Search for C. And then you're going to want to install the C slash C++ extension by Microsoft. It's a verified package with like 40 million downloads. And you're just going to want to install that and potentially you might have to restart your VS Code. Once you have that all set up, however, we're ready to write our first C program. So as we saw in the slide deck before, the entry point for our C program is always in the main function. And so we have to define that, otherwise our C compiler will not be able to find the entry point for our program. So let's start by defining this function. At first, it's going to look a bit strange and I'm not going to explain the specifics of how this function declaration works. So you're just going to have to copy after me. So we're going to type int, which is short for integer, 
and then main and then we're going to open and close some brackets and then we're going to open and close curly braces and split them like this and I'll make this a bit bigger so you can see what I'm doing. All right, so what's going on here? Well, this is called a function declaration. In this case, we're saying that we're writing a function or a piece of code and we're going to call it main. And when the code has finished writing, well, sorry, when the code has finished running, it's going to give us back a value. It's going to return a value is what we call it. And in this case, it's going to be an integer. Now that sounds all a bit messy and complicated maybe if you haven't programmed before. If you have programmed, you'll be familiar with this, but if you haven't, don't worry, we're gonna go over this in a separate episode. Okay, from here, we're going to need to change our function just a little bit. When we run a command from the command line, pressing say control and the little tilde key on your keyboard, it's the key above uh, the tab key on most standard keyboards. It'll bring up an integrated terminal. If you're on Windows, you can, you can use a command like echo for example, and whatever you pass to echo, it'll spit back out to you. And the way this actually works is it essentially finds the main function of echo and then it just provides the rest of the string afterwards. So this allows us to give instructions or arguments to our program. And C also wants to provide those to you. So we need to expand our function header and we need to basically, and you can call these different things, but this is just a convention. So you need to do an int arg counter and you also need to do a char star arg v array. Okay, now that looks messy. Okay, there's a lot going on there and it's actually fairly simple. And when we cover in an episode's time or two, we're going to cover data types and this will make a lot more sense. But for now, just know that this is the most basic C program you can run. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is we're just gonna come down the bottom and we're just gonna put a return zero statement here. Okay, what this means is when this line of code is run, it basically just tells the computer that our program ran correctly and as we wanted it to. So, in this case, we're just going to add a thing called a comment. So two slashes to create a comment and see, and we're just going to say everything worked as our comment. Because if we get to this point and we return zero, that tells the computer that everything worked. A comment is just the way of us leaving little notes to ourselves in our program that the computer will not read. So we can type anything we want after two forward slashes, and you can see it's in green here. So the computer won't read it. And it's just so we can keep little notes for ourselves. Okay, so now time to write the most famous of all programs the hello world program. This is the program we write when we're getting started in any language. So let's just do it. I'm sure most of you are pretty familiar with this concept if you've programmed in a different language before anyway. All we need to do is call a function called printf. Oops, if I can type, which I cannot. printf, and then we simply need to tell it to print what we want to print. Or in our case, hello world. So we're simply saying, call the print function and we're going to print what's inside these quotation marks, this string. Sorry if this is a bit basic for those of you who have already programmed, we're going to get a bit more advanced soon. I'm just trying to cover off all bases. In C, a really important concept is that any line of code that isn't a function declaration, we pretty much need to finish with a semicolon, which just is a way of telling the compiler that, hey, this statement is finished. It's essentially a full stop for programming. If you come from a programming language like Python, this is a bit unfamiliar to you. Now that we have our initial program written, it's time to try to compile it and to see if we can get our code running. So to do this, assuming that you have the GCC compiler installed, you need to open up your command prompt. Now, there's multiple ways you can do this. On Windows and Mac, you can search for terminal and open that, or the far easier way if you're using VS Code is to simply go to terminal in the top bar and new terminal, which will open the terminal in the bottom half of this window. You're just going to want to check that you are using command prompt. If you are not using command prompt, click this down arrow and make sure you select command prompt from the list of available prompts. The next thing you're going to want to do is to type in GCC for the GCC command. Space, and then what we're going to do is give it our file name. In this case, main.c. Note that this will only work if your command prompt path is the same as the path that your file is stored in. In our case, since our main.c file is stored within the getting started with C folder, we are able to access it using the GCC command. Running this by, by itself will work. However, 
we might want to specify an output parameter. This means we can set the name of the file that gets generated when it gets compiled. So to do this, we do a hyphen O and then the name of the file that we want to generate. In this case, we'll generate a file called main.exe. exe for the executable extension on Windows. If you're on Mac or Linux, you can just leave the exe pit or bit out, you don't need it. Hitting enter on this, we should expect to see an error here. You can see that the compiler is giving us some warnings. It's saying that the implicit declaration of function printf is not present. It says, note, include standard.ioh or, or provide a declaration for printf. Now, what does this mean? Well, by default, C actually doesn't implement any functions that we can just use. They don't exist in the default scope of things. We can't just access them. In order to use functions, we have to define them first. However, in this case, we want to use a function that is defined by the operating system that will allow us to print some text to the console. To get access to this, we need to do something called a preprocessor include statement, which will include a header file, which is essentially just a pre-written code file that someone else has done, which will give us access to this function. We'll talk in much more detail about header files and function declarations in a later video in this series. But for now, just know that we need to come up to the top of our file and use the hash include directive to tell the compiler that we want to include code from a different file. Then we want to use the angle brackets and type in stdio.h and then close angle brackets. What this does is it says to the compiler that we want to include some code from somewhere else. Then, because we're using angle brackets, it tells the compiler that we want to use code contained within the C standard library. Again, we will talk about this in greater detail at a later date. Specifically, we want to include the standard input-output library, which allows us to do things like printing and getting character input from the terminal. Now, it's giving us an error here, and what's it saying? Expected file name C++13 or whatever. This is just a VS Code quirk. Sometimes VS Code gives you little strange or unusual errors that will go away once you save the file. So don't worry too much about them. Okay, so now that we've included our standard io.h, what will happen is when the compiler runs, when it sees this line, it will immediately go and find this file on your operating system and copy and paste all of the code from that file into the top of this one. And in that copy paste is the definition for this function, which will allow us to print to the screen. So coming back down to our terminal, and rerunning our last command, gcc main.c taco main.exe, and hitting enter, you'll see that now we have generated a main.exe file in our directory. Now, if we tried to open this in VS Code, you'll notice that we can't really open it. If you have a hex editor installed, you can, but it's just gibberish. So what is this? Well, this is the actual machine code that our code has been translated into. The C compiler has taken this and turned it into this which is just a bunch of ones and zeros, which the machine is able to read. To run that, we can actually just type in the word main on our command line because a main.exe file exists. When you type a command in, it simply looks for a program with the same name. So typing in main and hitting enter will run our program. And as you can see, hello world has successfully been printed to the console. So that's it for getting started. We've written our first program our Hello World program, and we've learnt a little bit about the basic process of compilation and includes. In the next few episodes, we're going to go in a lot deeper detail about data types, how function definitions work, how the standard library works, and how data and stuff is represented in memory. But for now, this is just the basics to get you up and running.